My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you are joining us tonight. We know your time is very valuable. And so we want to make the most of it. And we are going over the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. And we are having some fun while we are doing it. And we thank you guys for joining us. And we are on the 15th commandment. And we do not actually know what that is yet. And so we're just reading through this up until we are finding them. And so we are actually in Genesis 26. And it begins. <clears throat> Verse 1. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abram. And Yitchak went unto Avlamech, king of the Peleshitim, unto Gerar. And Yahuwah appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Mitzrayim. Dwell in the land which I shall tell of you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and will bless you. For unto you, and unto your seed, I will give all these countries, counties, countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham, your father. And I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give your seed all these countries. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and did guard my watch, my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah. Okay, so there's no, guys, do you, does anyone have any kind of commands that you see? Anything? I don't think it's a command. You're just saying, since he followed him, you'll be blessed. Yeah, and so this is something right here that if we are to look at this, and the it, Avram is definitely a qualified person of the Most High. He is somebody who is a friend of the Most High. He's been accounted to him as a friend. And so if we look at qualities of somebody who is a friend of the Most High, it says he obeyed my voice, did guard my watch, my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah. So right there, he was walking and talking with the Most High because he obeyed his voice and heard him. Um, and he, he does these things. So I guess my question to everybody out there is, are you guys friends of the Most High? Because if you see the qualifications other people who are friends of the Most High have, and you're not obeying the voice of Yah, and you're not guarding his watch, and you're not guarding his commandments, his statutes, and his Torah, then you're probably not a friend of the Most High, and that would make you, you know, I mean, the opposite. An enemy. Yeah. Verse 6, And Yitchak dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his woman, and he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my woman, lest, said he, the men of the place will kill me for Rivka, because she was fair to look upon. So we've just, I don't know if this is a generational curse or if this is like the same. The key, he, he pulled an Abraham. He pulled, yeah, he pulled an Abram. And, um, they keep lying about this. Yeah, they do. They, they're liars. Yeah, I mean, Abraham time. technically wasn't lying, but this one is definitely a lie. Right, and why, why is he lying? He's afraid for his life. I mean, it's, I think uh, it's, I, a lack of, it's almost a lack of faith. Thing it's a lack of lack of faith. That y'all is gonna protect them. He's just like he's scared for his life. He's like, this is my sister. This is, I mean, the poor kings of this land. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's supposed to have been a different time in a different land. It's like <laughs> somebody has a good-looking wife, and they're like, okay, that's mine, you know, and you kill the dude and take. Surely the wife. he wouldn't fall for this twice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, verse 8. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Avlamach, king of the Peleshitim, looked out a window and saw him. Behold, Yitchak was sporting with Rivka, his woman. And Avlamach called Yitchak and said, Behold, of a surety, she is your woman. And how said you, she is my sister? And Yitchak said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. And Avlamach said, what is this you have done unto us? One of the people might lightly have leaned with your woman, and you should have brought guilt, guiltiness upon us. And Avlamach charged all those people, saying, He that touches this man or his woman shall surely be put to death. Then Yitchak sowed in that land and received in that same year a hundredfold, and Yahuwah blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants, and the Peleshitim envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abram, his father, the Peleshitim had stopped them, and filled them with the earth. And Avlamach said unto El Yitchak, Go from us, for you are much mightier than we. And Yitchak departed thence, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Yitchak dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abram, his father, for the Peleshitim had stopped them after the death of Abram, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Yitchak's servants dug in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. 
And the herdsmen of Gerar did strive with Yitchak's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they dug another well, and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitana. And he removed from thence, and dug another well. For, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rechavoth. And he said, For now Yahuwah has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. So this is three wells, um, and we've talked about wells before on this, maybe for those who haven't heard us talk about wells. Um, guys, tell me what a process of a well looks like, a standard well. What uh, do we do? It's, it's definitely a lot of work. So what you got to do is you take, you have kind of like a little... You just go a, pick a spot to begin with. Pick a spot. You have a mini pry bar, a little pickaxe, some points, a shovel, and you have a small shovel when you get down the well. But you got to dig it out about like three feet by three feet, usually a three-foot three circle. And then you just dig down until you find water. Yeah, you just keep going down. And, and so, sometimes there are very big rocks, and you need a big pulley system to pull them out. And so we've had, how many? Three, three, uh, successful. three successful two that are not. Yeah. And they became a rock, and we don't know the difference between, uh, we don't know how far the rock is. It seems like the rock is like overtaking the well. And so here we have three separate times, and the, the key to all life, and especially where we're at, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and if... if you know, there's no pipes or anything running by us for water or anything of the sort. So if we don't have a well or a way to make water, get water, we don't have anything of that sort. So um, water is the key essential piece of life. And these guys were sitting here duking it out. And wells, you know, a lot of people don't know a lot of stuff about wells. Wells are obviously not infinite, right? The water will disappear. And if these guys are trying to feed all of their herds... The reason that these guys are striving with this is the wells are running out of water, and it takes time to refill a well, and you just can't go forever and um, let them ride. So that's why um, that's why wells are wells. And he removed. <clears throat> where are we at? Anyone? Uh, uh, see, we, uh, we three. And he went up from thence to Beer Sheva, and Yahuwah appeared unto him the same night and said, "I am the Eloi of Abram your father. Fear not, for I am with you, and will bless you and multiply your seed for my sake." For my servant Abram's sake. And he built there an altar and called upon the name of Yahuwah and pitched his tent there and, and there Yitchek's servants dug a well. What do you guys ex what do you guys think of this experience? How how would you guys react to something of this nature? I mean um, it's something it depends on what it looks like, you know. If something appears like wild looking in the middle of the night, you're probably gonna be a little freaked out and then you say Yahuwah, you might be a little calmer if you actually believe in That'd him. Be surreal. It'd be like a really crazy thing, like Yahuwah comes out, personally talks with you and is like I'm with you, and that's that's just like a. It's probably a really great feeling to hear. Yeah, I mean, what what is it, a, a beam of light? I I don't know. You you, you I mean, try to imagine gonna, this. But. We know that we cannot see the face of Yahuwah, and live, yeah. and so uh, you know he there was something probably extraterrestrial style of like uh, encounter. Um, I'm not saying he was an alien. I'm just saying there was like it was probably like a beam of light or something very strange. All right, so here we are. <clears throat> Where are we at, General? Twenty six. Twenty six. Then Abelmech went up to him from Gerar, and Akuzah, one of his friends, and Pichtol, the chief captain of his army, and Yitchak said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw clearly that Yahuwah was with you. And we said, let there, be, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and you, and let us cut a covenant with you, that you will do us no hurt, as we have not touched you, and as we have done unto you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace, you are now blessed of Yahuwah. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink. And they rose up early in the morning and swore one to another. And Yitchak sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Yitchak's servants came and told him concerning the well that they had dug, and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheva. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheva unto this day. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to be his woman, Yahudith, the daughter of Be'eri, the Chitti, and Basmath, the daughter of Elion, the Chitti, which were a grief of mind unto Yitchak and to Rivka. Okay, so what happens here? Esau went and did what? He, married, he did what he was told not to do. What, what Abraham had told his uh, Elazar to not do to for Yitchak, do not get a woman of the Canaanites or the Kittites, get them from my relatives and... Yeah, he's, he's a bad dude. He, he was really bad to his parents. He uh, didn't listen. He wasn't there for Yah. And um, he had basically all the chances in the world to be, um, you know, a walking with Yah, and he didn't. So, any commandments there, anyone? I got nothing out of that one. 
Alright. Cade, no. Eli? Okay. 27 1. And it came to pass that when Yitchak was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray you, your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, and that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rivka heard when Yitchek spoke to Esau his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rivka spoke unto El Yaakov, her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speak unto Esau your brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat that I may eat, and bless you before Yahuwah before my death. Now therefore, my son, Obey my voice according to that which I command you. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good goat, kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for your father, such as he loves. All right, let's let's break this down right here. <clears throat> what do we got? Uh, deceiver. Who? Uh, I'd say Rivka, Rebecca, and Jacob. Jacob. Well, I mean, this dude doesn't want any part of this. I mean, that's what we'll see right here. I mean, so is, if he's a deceiver... And something that I've discussed with your mother, and um, I think uh, Zach from New Tutora discussed this a little bit, of that um, as a married couple, there are things that by the age that they were in the process of the marriage, um, number one, I don't think that she is going to deceive her Adonai like this. I believe this was a plan that was hatched between both of them. That, Send Esau away and have yes, Jacob come they, in. Like, like this was... They knew that Esau was out marrying people they did not like. The girls were probably disrespectful to the parents. The parents, they the last dude they wanted to bless was Esau. And so it looks like a plan was probably hatched between them. And, um, you know, it's like, you know, how do you how do you deceive someone to this nature? Yeah, maybe I mean, Yah there's... helped them or something of the sort. But I believe this was the way that they made things right. I mean, at this point, last time we saw that Esau was already 40 years old. Surely they, he couldn't get confused with his own son, right? Surely there's a lot of differences, maybe their voice or something that he just... Well, he talks about it. He says here shortly, so let's, let's see how it goes down. Okay, where are we at? Uh, let's see. Seven. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, and before his death, and Yaakov said to El Rivka, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother is a hairy man and I am a smooth man. My father perchance will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be your curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. All right, so who is breaking what law? Who, what commandments are being broken here? Uh, I think do not lie. I would tell you one of them. Do not lie. Like if um, Abraham was truly... Um, uh, Yitchek. Yitchek, excuse me. If Yitchek was truly like really super old, um, then they really pulled it up. They bamboozled him. I don't know why they just didn't like send him away and then call out like, Yaakov, Yaakov, come here real quick. Come here, I'm going to bless you. Because that wouldn't seem organic. Him. That wouldn't seem organic. And in, in Esau would blame the parents for this entire thing. This, the parents are yeah, able to I'm wash sh- their hands. I'm, I'm, I'm just really old. It, I, I didn't. Yeah. There's just a lot of a lot of complexity to this whole situation. So at this point, I'm thinking that Rebecca and uh, Isaac had hatched a plan, and Yaakov didn't know about the plan. Jacob, you know about the plan. So he's like, hey, I'm going to get cursed for this. And like, no, no, don't worry. You'll be fine. Your curse will be on me. So they know what's going to happen. She knows that they're, he's going to get blessed. Yeah, and I mean, the mother and the father, the last thing they want to do is is have the wrong, the right blessing go to the wrong child. And so based upon where he was, the blessing should have definitely gone to Esau. Okay, um, except, you know, he traded off all of his blessings and things of that nature. So here we go. Uh, 14. 14. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rivka took good, goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Yaakov, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Now, Esau was either like, like Sasquatch. Sas- yeah, Sasquatch. I was going to say, like, some hairy feller. Um, yes. Because goat's fur is, like, big. Unless they're, like, shaving it way down. And he's just got, like, hair on his neck, like a normal thing. You know, you could definitely, you know, from being on the farm, I, I'm going to expose this. We, we we don't smell great. I'm telling you what. We're uh, down south. And I, I, I remember being up in Babylon, and we're all about, like, uh, 
staying primpy and fresh and deodorant on and all this stuff. I don't know. It's just so hot down here. It's like uh, the last thing on our mind. And, and, and so, yeah, sorry, folks. But you're going to have those clothes, the rainament. It's going to smell funky. Like you're probably there's going to be a difference between Esau and Yaakov for sure. Uh, the dude who's outside is going to smell like smoke and everything else. And the dude inside is probably not going to be quite that if, different. So anyway, um, where are we? Um, 16. 16. And she, and she put the skins of the kids, I think we did 17, mm-hmm. uh, upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread, which she prepared in the hand of her son, Yaakov. <clears throat> and he came unto his father and said, my father, <clears throat> my father. And he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? And Yaakov said unto his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. So some Torah breaking here. Yeah, definitely. There's some breaking lies Torah. I have done according to according as you bade me. Arise, I pray you, sit and eat of my venison that your soul may bless me. Now I can tell you guys, even though the twins, the older twins sound a lot alike and a lot of times in your lives, I can still tell just by how you talk, how you say it, what you say. I, I don't need to see you to understand who you guys are. So, again, he's, he must be getting really super old, but yet he doesn't die for a few more chapters after this. So he's, it seems like he's still in okay health. I don't know. You tell me. Okay. Um, I pray he sit and eat of my venison. Where are we at, gentlemen? Because I keep track here. 20. 20. And Yitchak said unto his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? Another lie. And he says, Because Yahuwah Eloheka brought it to me. And I guess that's not exactly a lie, but I mean, I guess we got to define what white lies are and how... What, I mean, what, his mom would have got the, the food. Yeah, well, you know, Yahuwah technically somehow brought it to him. And Yitchak said unto, said unto El Yaakov, Come near, I pray you that I may feel you, my son, whether you may be my very son Esau or not. He grabs up and feels like, he's like go. I All right, it's Jacob. We're I, good. Dude, I could tell you, Yako was like sweating bullets right there. He was like game over. He doesn't know dad and mom are in the ruse. They, they know all this. Dude, and so this, he's this just like, you, man. he's like, this is going down. He must have feel me now. He's they're, like, they're 40 years old, man. You surely, by 40 years, you know them apart easily without seeing them. You uh, live with them literally every single day of their uh, lives. You're like in the same house there for like 40 years. Dude, they got to have insane. totally different voices. Like, yeah, yeah, Esau sounds, it's going to be like some gruff. Mountain Dew. Oh, it does? Okay. (laughs) Okay, thanks, Nicole. Verse 22. Yep. And Yaakov went near unto El Yitschak, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Yaakov's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He's like sitting there like, All right, checks out. This is definitely Yaakov. (laughs) Well, it says that he discerned him not, or he probably concerned him not with the issue. Because his hands were hairy and his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. His, his, his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. And he said, verse 24, are you my son Esau? And he said, I am. So we have uh, like major lies with the cock crows. I mean, if we're talking like... This is one of the wildest uh, generation lines of the Messiah, man. Let your, let your curse is- fall on me. You know, if he would have been exposed here, man, he could have totally had a curse well, would in Would he have been cursed, though? Would if he just have been all right? Would he... Would- he, I don't he think he's going to be deceptive. I don't think, unless this guy, the old man, was like senile. Unless he completely just, lost his mind. Just out of control. I mean, how old is he at this point? If there, He was 60 when and she at least had the kids. He's at least 100 right now. He's, yeah, he's 100 years old. Yeah, I could, he probably might lose your mind at this age. I don't know. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Like, 25. So, 25. And he said, bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless you. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Yitchak said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which Yahuwah has blessed me. Except they're rolling around. And- I'll, I'll tell you guys too as well. I mean, for people out there, every one of my kids like will hug and kiss me a little bit differently. It's not the same. Every single kid, you could tell. If I was totally blind, I could tell which kid was giving me a hug just by how they give you a hug. So... Again, this would have been completely awkward. Like, he would not hug like Esau hugged. He would not, you know, it's like, who knows? It's hard to emulate things like this. So either the uh, Yitchak is, is like out of... Questionable uh, behavior. Yeah. All right, so 28, right? Mm-hmm. Therefore, Elohim, give you of the dew of heaven. Here comes a blessing. And the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you. Notice he didn't say, uh, there, therefore, Esau, let Elohim. He started off and just said it g- generic. Therefore, Elohim, give you of the dew of heaven and, of, and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. 
B. Gevier. Master. M uh, Lord Gevier, one who is strong and valiant, who rules and prevails over another, over your brethren. I'm sorry, Esau. And let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone that curses you, and blessed be he that blesses you. <coughs> this is a, a common, this is a, a Christian I, I get this. We get this on this channel. Everybody that comes to this channel that, that uh, starts playing on the music section, they are like bless Israel. They're like bless, bless Israel, and that's what we learned in the Christian church. That if you curse Israel, you will be cursed. But if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. So we're always sitting around praying for Israel all the time. And um, you know, they're the dudes on the land are poachers. You know, they're Turks. They're not the real dudes, and they're not keeping the law, statutes, commands of our Creator. They're keeping twenty five other books, which are. Contrary to the Torah, and so they're, they're not the people of Yah. But the people of Yah are us, the people that are researching out right now, being Bereans that are, are studying to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed as we're rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? <clears throat> so here we are. Let's roll. And it came to pass as soon as Yitchak had made an end of blessing Yaakov. And Yaakov was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Yitchak. I bet he was right. Yeah, after the blessing, I've been gone. I'm totally gone. I've been like, in the mountains. Uh, yeah, I've been sitting out of the house for a few hours. But you know, the Esau's he's a, he's a mad hunter, so you know that dude's gonna be on your trail right out of the gate. It's gonna be like paranoia city. Better be sitting in that tent and yep. have that tent shut good. <laughs> and Yaakov was yet scarce gone from uh, gone out from the presence of Yitchak. His father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting, and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father. Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that your soul may bless me. And Yitchak, his father, said unto him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. And Yitchak trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that has taken venison and brought it to me, and I have eaten of all before you came and have blessed him? Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me. I thought it was rubbing. Oh, yeah, he's so blessed. Oh, he's it gets so worse than that. Here comes the blessing for him. Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. And he said, Your brother came with subtly and has taken away your blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Yaakov? For he has supplanted me these two times. What is it, Yaakov? I mean, he'll, he'll catch her. Yeah, he'll catch her. Uh, the, the patriarch. <laughs> half brother. Okay, uh, or that's not the, it's not the same one. He's not the half brother. Um, and he says, is he not rightly named Yaakov? For he has supplanted me these two times. He, has, he took away my birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? And Yitchak answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him your <laughs> gaverir, gaverir, and master. master, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with grain and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto you, my son? <laughs> and Esau said unto his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. I can imagine. And Yitchak his father answered and said unto him, Behold, your dwelling shall be in the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by your sword shall you live and shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you have, shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. And Esau hated Yaakov because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of my mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Yaakov. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rivka, and she sent and called Yaakov, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, your brother Esau, as touching you, comforts himself, purposing to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice and rise. Flee to Lavan, my brother in Haran. Lavan means what, folks? Laban. Laban. It's Laban, and it's, uh, didn't we have a name for this? Yeah, that's Isn't something. It like white or something? Yeah, that was like white man or something. Something, yeah, you can definitely <laughs> owned him. Um, now, therefore, my son, obey my voice uh, and arise. Flee to Lavan, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away. Fury turn away. Until your brother's anger turn away from you, and he forget that which you have done to him. Then I will send and fetch you from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? And Rivka said to El Yitchak, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Keth. If Yaakov take a woman of the daughters of Keth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? 
Okay, so we are at 24 minutes, and this is uh, that's only the second chapter. So. Right. Still third. Everyone, everyone, still good? Yeah, yeah. No command yet. All right. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about uh, the world out there? How'd the world go? <laughs> so the boys, the boys are down. They had to. We had to send them off to the city. So we're we're in, we're not we're in an undisclosed place in the south or south South America. So we had to send them to the big city. In the countryside of the world. Yeah, the countryside of the world. And these guys have been lit like homeschooled for the very beginning of time. We don't we don't get out very much, but they had to go renew their passports, and so they got to go see the big city. They got to see the 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 women dressed as they dress, the world as it lives, and the horns and honks and and the U.S. Embassy. How was that, boys? Yeah, the city is loud. People dress terribly. It's very worldly place. We haven't seen a car in nearly four years here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's, that's just not a, true. That's, that's not true. just a joke. <laughs> So anyway, tell me about small, the big city life, guys. How was it? It was really loud. How like, did the girls dress? Terrible, terrible. Honestly, awfully, very awfully. I did not expect because nobody where we live dressed like that. Did where, you, you get stony in Israel for this. Yeah, okay, so I mean, if you were out there looking for a, if you had to go find a woman out in the world today, what is it? What would you look for in a quality of a woman? I would still wouldn't even look inside the city to be honest. Yeah, well, the first thing is wouldn't be looking anywhere at this point. Lots of clothes. Like, yeah. You know, school. The girls are like dressed like old school, like like long dresses and clothes. Dude, those are those are beautiful women. But unfortunately, you're now stuck into a world that a Cobra Commander has come and uh, has inoculated everybody. Now everybody's all wacky, and uh, everybody's bumping into you with cell phones, and it's just yeah. We were we because we are bus stops at a mall, and everybody gets off, and everybody's heads are on their phone. We're just trying to get to our hotel. We're just trying to get there. We're just trying this to is find the first time they trying to find an Uber to the <laughs> hotel, and we don't have Uber where we are. We are at this is like a kind of a new thing to us. Uber, I think we've used like once before we went like years ago. This is the first time the boys have literally ever been away from like the house. And these people like slamming into us, and we're like, they, they, "Yo, I'm sorry." They I look exist. up and like, like, "Oh, sorry," and like, and like you just keep like, getting out of the way for people to keep running. Oh, into sorry, you. I exist. I guess. Did sorry, you guys I'm turn walking. the TV on in the hotel? No, not at all. No. Nothing at all. Yeah, but you uh, you got GMO'd out. We haven't eaten out for we don't, we never eat out. There's no such thing. So what did you guys do when you guys splurged? Where did you go? Uh, we went to Domino's. We did go to Domino's. Domino's, and you've been thinking about Sorry. that. Yeah, no. So we it don't. Was that we all don't, there was to eat in that city. Yeah, yeah and all right. that food. That food is completely GMO'd out. Everything everything that is out there in the world is completely GMO'd out. So did you guys make it healthily there all night? No. You made it there. Jane, you were, you were was, blowing chunks yeah, tonight. Jim was throwing. Jim was throwing up. Nine. Like, let's see. Our pizza was late. They decided they weren't going to deliver because they couldn't figure out where the hotel was, even though it was four minutes away. So we eat organic, too. Four more times. It's and so what was it like? It was only like, what, two hours after we ate, you are just throwing up everywhere? Yeah. It, yeah. it, was, it was real bad. It's like 15, 16 years of eating organic, and then you guys just had to go blow, blow a night on the city. You hear cars uh, and... Hours away from us. Seven, eight hours away from us. So it was an experience, and... Uh, are you guys ready? Is this this is the world? You guys ready? Yeah, for no. World? I think I per countryside over city life. City life, is like it's just too loud. It's just yeah. And you guys live. We don't see people. We never see anyone here. Yeah, the, yeah nobody around. Everywhere you go, there's hundreds of people all every, every direction. There's like, there's like thousands of people in this <laughs> mall, and I'm like, I'm like, wow, why are there so many people? Why, why are they on their phones? My biggest question is, why were they on their phones? Why are they bumping into me? Why wouldn't you stop hitting me? Guys, and if I could give you the, the vision of a couple of homeschoolers that have never been outside the house, and as they look outside the house and they look around in wonderment of it everything around it them. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. No. But anyway, all right, well, that's the world. You guys ready for it? You guys enjoy this world? No, no. no. You ready to go out there or you want to stay home and Take have the cows? Take <laughs> 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 All right, well, you and John Denver. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right, so no lessons. Is there any lessons for anybody out there? Is there, any, is there anything godly out there? Oh uh, yeah. Dress well. Please put some clothes oh, on. Oh, hey. So before I, I you guys left, I tasked you with feeding fishing for men. How did that go? Tell me about this guy you met. I heard about this. So all right, we gotta start before. So we're getting ready to leave. We hit our we hit our bus stop right before we leave town. And this bus passed us. He waved his finger at us, told us to like get bent basically, and we're like, we didn't know why. And I'm like, I was real upset about this because we were, we want to get there on time. We didn't want to get there like We're, we're in, white midnight. in a dark colored country, so sometimes buses give us the finger and they keep on rolling. Yeah, they did. He did. And I was like, <laughs> wow, okay, thanks. And then so then I got on the next bus and I sat next to this guy. And it's a Sunday. It was a Sunday when we went out. So he's listening to this Christian sermon and talking about Jesus and how like they're all the same. You got to pray. And, he, and the guy ends off in the sermon praying to Jesus. And it was all in Spanish. And I asked the guy, I said, are you Christian? He says, yes. And I'm like, do you read your Bible? And he's like, 
sometimes, like, you should read your Bible more often. So I got into it, and I started talking to him about the Torah and asked him what he thinks about that. And he's like, he had really no idea. So I started explaining to him basically what Christ did for us, or Yeshua. I explained to him the names, and I explained to him the Torah. I explained to him the end goal of our salvation. And by the end of it, he was, he was like, in tears saying, this morning, he's like, I was, I was praying to God. I said, please, I need direction. I need sign in my life, what I do. So he's like, you were the direction. I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's got a family. He's got kids. I'm like, please read your Bible with your family. So he's saying he's going to start in Genesis. I don't know what he's doing now, but I, hopefully he's reading Genesis. He says he's going to start from the beginning of the Bible, read all the way through with his family, depending on how long it takes. He, 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 doesn't, he works from way far, like four hours from home every single day. So it's the bottom line is a guy had prayed for a messenger to come by and somebody to help him and you guys just happened to come by and you were tasked, not only were you tasked, I told you guys, don't don't take this mission without ministering to these people. Since you speak the language, you guys speak Spanish, you guys can be sitting out there on the soapbox and you guys could be teaching the gospel. You guys can, can tell the people the good news. Um, unlike, you know, people people just don't know this kind of stuff out in here. So, anyway, it was a blessing. It was a blessed trip. And um, these boys got to see a little bit of the world. And I guess they're going to I don't want to see it again. Yeah, I guess they're going to stay sheltered. So, they were, uh, we're stuck down here. And um, that's it. All right. Genesis 28. 20. Is it 28? Yeah, 28. 28. 28. All right. And Yitchak called El Yaakov and blessed him. And charged him and said unto him, You shall not take a woman of the daughters of Canaan. So, I guess they made up. I guess they figured it out. Pops, uh, you know, it... Uh, Pops, I guess, wasn't so angry after uh, all. You know, I put on... Uh, I wonder if... It, you know, how did you go down? I, you know, with the help I, of your wife, with the help of my mother, uh, we we run, we ran one on you. You know, and I, don't, I don't know how that went down. I know, anyway. I, I'd be really angry at everyone for, like, ma making sure my firstborn that was supposed to get the blessing didn't get his blessing. That would make me really upset. I would, I would destroy the entire house. I would be so upset with all of you. Like, everyone yeah, like If cursed. the wife was in on this, I would totally be in, involved. I would be upset on the whole thing. I would understand it, and I'd probably be relieved as how it went down, but I'm thinking to myself, so am I this old that these guys have to run trains on me like this, and this is the way it goes? I'd be upset. Anyway. Unless so, it was staged. Unless it was staged, and it was all part of the game, and you were just an actor in a theatrical experience just for Esau's own endeavor. Getting hoaxed. Yep. Hoaxing, hoaxing good. Um, so anyway, he's talking to him, and he, why is he talking to him right now? Because he's about to leave, he's about to take but, but off. Why? Why? Why is? Why is he specifically having this conversation with him right here? Because he does not want. Because his mother was very upset, and she was like, "Hey, he's gonna. If my life, everything will be over. If this guy takes a, a wife from the children of Keth, this is gonna be over." And so he's having one final conversation. He says, "He says you shall not take a woman of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, verse two, go to Padam Aram to the house of Bethel, your mother's father, and take you a woman from thence of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother." And El Shaddai, what is El Shaddai, folks? Uh, it's like, it's Yahuwah, but I don't know what the... What does anyone know the what L is, an, that is enough. The L is enough? Mine doesn't come up on mine. The L that is enough. The L that is enough, yeah, it's not... I'm seeing the love, I'm trying to push on it. <laughs> and El Shaddai, bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be a multitude of people. And give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed with you, that you may inherit the land wherein you are a stranger, which Elohim gave unto Abraham. And Yitchak went, sent away Yaakov, and he went to Param Aram unto Levon, son of Bethuel, the Amri, the brother of Rivka, Yaakov's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Yitchak had blessed Yaakov and sent him away to Param Aram to take him a woman from thence, and that he and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, You shall not take a woman of the daughters of Canaan, and that Yaakov obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Param Aram. And Esau saw that the seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Yitchak his father. Then Esau, then went Esau unto El Yishmel and took unto the, the woman, which he had Makla Makleth, the daughter of Yishmel, Avram's son, the sister of Neveyath, to be his woman. So this guy not only is is he just an outcast from his family, and he's just he's cursed now, and uh, he's literally cursed. He's like a proud rebel. Yeah, and then he just he's, he. This is just spiteful. This is what kids are really you know, spiteful. I thought he'd go back into Canaan. <laughs> I thought he was like, he'd go back into Canaan and get another one. <laughs> yeah, this is just like really just kind of spitting on your family here. <clears throat> and Yaakov went out from Be'er Sheva and went toward Haran. And he, lighted, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it, ascending and descending on it. And behold, 
Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah Elohai of your of Abraham your father and the Elohai of Yitchak. The land whereon you lie to you will I give it and to your seed. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in the in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Anyone see any commandments here yet? No. Are you sure? Because he's sitting here talking, but stuff's coming out here, right? And he's he's saying things, right? And he's your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and south. I mean, is that a, is that a command? He's talking no. to you. I like it's saying that he's going to multiply so much, he's just going to be everywhere. Well, I mean, if, what happens if you just would spread out to the south? He gave him a, this is a, this is a command here. He's like, spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. I don't know. It, it, Nicole, you have anything? This is verse 14, 28, 14. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north, to the south, and in you, sh and, and in you, and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess. I don't think it's really a I mean, if you had a huge family, you would all want to go. Multiply. Multiply. All right. If anyone out there has any kind of info for us, let us know. Verse 15. And behold, I am with you and will guard you in all places, whether you go and will bring you again into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you of. And Yaakov awoke out of his sleep and he said, surely Yahuwah is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of heaven. I wonder where that was at. Huh? I wonder where that was at. Yeah, that wonder where that was at. How about them rocks he slept on, right? I mean, he just like literally slept on some rocks. And this was probably the best night of sleep he had up well, until he gives this. Him, he gives the place a name. So if there's any hope of finding it. Okay. And he called the name of the place Bet El. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. I bet everybody over there in oh, Israel knows this. Did I say did it? Say 18? 18. Okay. And Yaakov rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. So I guess back in the day they knew what pillows were. Is that a comfortable rock? Was that comfortable? I mean, it was a heck of a rock. I bet you could get a comfortable rock. I mean, he stood rock. up as a column. How big is the column? Like a little t uh, It'd be a small rock, but it'd like probably a little, be a flat rock. Like a little thing. As I mean, long as a flat rock, you could do it. You're not taking you like sleeping gear with him. I mean, you just go by himself. That was it. Just one pair of clothes. Well, that's, that's probably an awesome rock. I take that rock with me when I left. I take. <laughs> he actually left it as a memorial. But that's all right. <laughs> and he called the name of the place Bet El, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Yaakov vowed a vow, saying, "If Elohim will be with me and will guard me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on." So that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall Yahuwah be my Elohim. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be Elohim's house. And of all that you shall give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. Okay, this is a tithing thing, and this is a um This is a tithing thing, and this is a this is somebody making a, a commitment back to Yah. So this yeah. is a an addition to a a, a different kind of Torah, because he's he's giving stipulations to Yah. He goes, if you'll give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, then you will be my my, my Yahuwah. Elohim. Yeah, my Elohim. The tenth of everything I have. Yeah, and so the Christians will say this right here, that this is where you need to give a tenth to Elohim. And I would say, well, actually, let me see what you guys say. What do you guys say? I would say this is him personally giving to it, and we should give to the Levites, not the church. Well, let's say, let's say... That Elohim was was walking with us, and then this is what he he just made a deal straight with Elohim. There were no Levites, there were no nothing. He just made a straight deal that he I feel would like give. His ten percent was like in sacrifices himself when he would make the sacrifice himself. Maybe, or maybe he took ten percent, and maybe he would go clothe the poor. Maybe he would go make a change, or maybe he was he doing would do something, something good with it. He was not like keeping it for himself. He was putting it to use, whatever he was. So doing. is a ten percent? I mean, is this a command? No. Why? Because it's a, it's a personal vow that he made with Yahuwah. But we get the 10% right much later on in Leviticus about the Levites and giving them the 10% every year. But here he's just saying, I'm going to give you a 10% of everything that I produce, everything that I profit off of. What do you guys think about making this, this uh, 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 I don't know, a vow with Yahuwah? Say, hey, as long as I have food and raiment. Uh, I mean, what, ha what happens when you don't have food? And what happens when you don't have raiment? Are you going to give up Yah? That what happens when you're being tested? I would say no, but keep being faithful to your commitment. Like whatever you, know. you have, keep giving that 10%. I mean, 
he is faithful. I mean, I just I felt like it's testing. I felt felt like something like that would be testing our Creator. Say, hey, I you know, as long as you give me food to eat and clothes, I mean, we're not promised that. None of us are promised food. None of us are promised tomorrow. None of us are promised health. And none of this has to do with is Yah blessing us or not. I mean, a lot of it has the conditions of the world, the conditions of our environment. I mean, people are dying all the time because they're in a in a an exposed environment. We have toxins all around us from the from the trash they drop in the sky all over the top of us all the way to the food that is GMO'd out the red four red 40s yellow five um, aspartame all of this stuff it, it is it completely is poisoning us and it's you know there's stuff in the United States food supply that is outlawed across the world and, and I think it's blue four blue 40s things of that nature and it's uh, you know even subway you're eating yoga mats and things of that nature inside of that and it may taste super great but the chemicals that are in there are the same stuff that is in yoga mats. So we have been deceived on every kind of level. And um, I think the only way that we'll never, ever be deceived is by understanding the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. And I think the more that we are studying this and that we are studying ourselves to be approved, uh, understanding this stuff. And I mean, we can't just take a man's word for it who's standing in a pulpit because um, most of these guys go to a school and they're indoctrinated and they're told what to believe and it's contrary to what the Bible says because they've never read the book which they're trying to teach from or they haven't read it enough. And so, anyway, that is um, that. Is that. Um, the Torah is, is all things good. I don't see anything wrong with the Torah. I don't see anything uh, cursing with the Torah. I, I see us being cursed by not following the Torah. Eli, what do you think? Let's wrap this up. Uh, yeah, we, you get blessings from the Torah and not cursing. Okay, and gentlemen, um, what else you got for everyone? Uh, I want to go into the thing about Isaac. Where he's like, uh, I will since your father followed the Torah, I will bless you. So that pretty much can still apply. Like if you if you your parents follow the Torah, you have children. You follow the Torah, your children will be blessed because of your following. But if your parents weren't following the Torah, there's generational curses. Right, and there's general racial curses because you'll end up doing stuff that is contrary to the Torah that you'll continue on doing. And I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff in the Torah that is, is a guide for life. It is, is really like uh, food for the soul. And if we're keeping the Torah, we are, we are walking in righteousness. Now, guys, is, is by keeping the Torah, is this your salvation? No. Where is salvation found? A Yehoshua. Who's Yehoshua? He is the son of Yahuwah. That's, that's Jesus the Christ. His name was never Jesus because there was no J's in Hebrew, and Jesus didn't come around until much many years later. So I was told when I was a Christian that I just need to ask Jesus into my heart, and I need to follow the Romans Road to Christianity. So that's what they actually call it. They, they call it the Romans, I think it's Romans Road. Romans to, Road to Salvation. Yeah, that's it. Romans Road to Salvation. It's all Paul said, Paul said, Paul said. And again, he was speaking to the Romans, and... Uh, yeah, that's not that wasn't all for us, but it, it, we can take good things out of it and apply it to our lives. But he was talking to the Romans and replying to a letter they had written him. Yeah, and and again, the commands of Yah are super simple, guys. We have them right here. We don't even have to go over them because we've already gone over these here to an nauseum. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. The uh, every herb bearing tree is for food. Men and women should build their their families, master sin. Um, every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's is covenant. Every male should be circumcised at eight days old. And teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. So when we put these on the cross and we say they don't apply to us anymore, then we're really slapping our creator and we're really slapping ourselves. We might as well just be slapping ourselves because we are, we're just really ignorant. We yeah. shouldn't be doing this. All right. Much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys so much. Everybody who made it this far. We do appreciate it. And, um, much love. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, everyone.